We're getting close, we're getting close, we're getting really close. So, hi guys, welcome to a new video. If you don't know me, my name is Maya, I hate tomatoes. We're getting really, really close to Christmas. So I thought, let's do another <laughs> versus <laughs> So we're doing pets today. But first, the advert calendar. Good morning. So today it is first day. I'm up bright and early to do, do some washing. <laughs> Fun. Uh, also today is my like big big food prep day because today I'm doing a dinner. Tomorrow I'm going over to my dad and I'm going to be preparing some snacks. And Saturday I'm doing another dinner. And I don't really have super much time either tomorrow or Saturday because I mean Saturday is Christmas Eve. Um, so I want to like prep everything I can prep today, hopefully. I also need to wash my hair. Bunch of things. Anyway, let's open today's book. Let's see, 22. Oh, this one was pretty. So it's by Moa Martinson and it's called Fjäderbrevet, which means the feather letter. I think it might be a love story, something. It's 34 pages, so not super long. Okay, interesting. Now for our tea, let's see, 22nd. We have a, a winter tidbit. Uh, it's a rooibos, 100 degrees, five to eight minutes. Yeah, it's rooibos, cinnamon, cacao, Cranberries, blueberries, orange, rose pepper. Uh, yeah, interesting. Let's give it a go. is nice and ready it smells very like spicy uh, I can't put my finger on that smell this but okay oh that's weird there's a very unique flavor Kind of tastes like you're eating a cake, uh, like cinnamon cake, maybe. I'm not sure if I like it or not. <laughs> it's something a bit savory with it too, but I don't know what I think about it. Wow, I'm a bit perplexed now. <laughs> it's like not what I expected at all. Okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna read the book, maybe think about this a bit more <laughs> and try to understand if I like it or not. Uh, and yeah, see you in a bit. This was another book that I feel like I didn't completely get. So it's a, well first it's a story about a girl who gets pregnant. This I think was in the 1800s somewhere. Um, and uh, outside of wedlock, very dramatic. Uh, and um, the her mother and dad go into the village to get the new baby. Uh, baptized and it's whole thing and then you later know that the daughter moves out with the baby into a town and then you follow the baby when she's a kid uh, and this is the story both of the mother telling her daughter about these letters that were sent between nights I think that they would come there would be a letter and then it would have a feather in it and then somebody would have to uh, deliver it somewhere else and the mother once had to do it and almost like froze to death it was traumatic uh, and then the family goes up to see the grandma and it's a whole thing and I don't get the point at all I don't know if I'm tired or if it just wasn't clear but it just feels like there wasn't a point to the story 
And you don't always need to have a point, but usually it is, especially with these older books. So I'm a bit confused. But yeah, it was fine enough. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's it for today. I uh, figured out that I do not like that tea. Because, you know, sometimes when you taste something new, you don't really know if you like it or not because it's just different and you need to like figure out if it's different good or different bad. This wasn't really for me. It wasn't disgusting, but not my preference. Back to the pass. The pear question. Poached pass. What is better? A saffron pear or a glug pear? And you might be tired of me talking about glug and saffron and that's completely fine, but they are essential flavours to Christmas. At least for me, I think they're very, very important. So I was like, okay, we can do a glug poached pear and a saffron poached pear. And which one is better? Let's let them fight it out, okay? So let's try. Okay, so we got our two different pairs here with our different condiments, if you will. I really don't know which one I'm going to prefer, so let's start with our saffron pear. The saffron pear has its cardamom cream, lightly whipped cream. Let's try. Ooh, that's nice. It's definitely sweet and it has a saffron taste but not too in your face because saffron can easily like dominate a dish. It's not like this at all. The cardamom pears well. It's nice. Definitely a thumbs up. Let's try our glug pear with a bit of cheddar. Let's try it. That one punched a bit more flavour both from the actual pear and the cheese because like cheddar is quite a strong flavour. And I think that could be tricky, like you don't want too much cheese to the pear, then it'll completely kill the pear flavour. But it was a really nice combination and you get like the winey spice flavour from the pear with the like sharp cheese, it's very nice. I don't know which one I prefer. They're both really tasty. I feel like 
They're good but for different things, like the saffron one is more of a dessert, while the glug one feels more like it should be on a cheese board. I prefer the glug one a little, little bit more, but they're both, it's like half a point more. They're both delicious, so yeah, thumbs up. You know, if anybody's a winner here today, I think I'm the winner, because I got to eat both of them, and they were both delicious. And both were delicious in their respective ways, so if you make this, you can also be a winner. A true Christmas winner, and isn't that what Christmas is about? Winning. Make sure your aunt does not outdo you on the Christmas dinner. You got this, I believe in you. Make her cry. <laughs> okay, bye guys. Bye.